Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to my course that is aspects of biochemical engineering and uh, we are now discussing about the kinetics of substrate utilization, product for, uh, formation and biomass production of microbial cells. Now in the last couple of lectures I try to uh, discuss that uh, regarding the cell growth kinetics by using monod and the other equation which is followed by analysis of the batch process then CSTR or chemostat and the plug flow reactor. Now what we observe that chemostat may be the better process as compared to other process the reason is that it is easy to operate and your productivity also it is quite high as compared to other processes. Now when and, and chemostat is such a process we can, we can maintain a particular phase of growth for infinite period of time. Uh, now when we discuss about the chemostat, the major drawback of the chemostat is the cell mass that wasting from the reactor. So cell mass that is going out from the reactor, if it is more as compared to cell mass that is growing in the reactor then a time will come there will be no cell present in the reactor what you call D washout or, or in other way if the hydraulic retention time is less than the generation time the before the cell multiply you are taking off the cell from the reactor and we meeting the situation of cell washout and when the, there is no cell present in the reactor so there is no, no reaction take place inside the reactor. Now to, so to overcome this problem, one approach that we have seen that is the cell mass recycling. Now besides the cell mass recycling, there is other, other, other technique that also we can use that is called immobilization of the whole cell. What we can do? We can hold the cell on the solid matrix and then we pass our substrate then we will find that you know that no cell, most of the cell that retain inside the reactor. So we do not have, we can easily overcome the cell washout problem. Now if you look at <coughs> this, so what do you mean by whole cell immobilization? Now whole cell, whole cell immobilization is, is, is an alternative to the, uh, alternative to the enzyme immobilization and is a well developed method for the utilization of enzyme inside the cell from the microbes. So you know that uh, in case of, in, in case of uh, 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 this uh, microbial cells, what is the, they have the metabolic pathways. When we immobilize the cell, then, uh, then the substrate that uh, go inside the cell and undergo the metabolic pathway and give the respective products and take it out. The immobilization of the whole cell becomes uh, become particularly effective when the individual cells become inactive during the direct immobilization technique. So what I want to mean, suppose this is the solid matrix and uh, we know the, uh, the active side is this one. Now by chance this active side of the enzyme is uh, fixed on the solid matrix then the enzyme will be inactive. Now here in case of uh, the organism, this is not uh, happened because this is the cell and inside the cell we have the biomolecules. So there is no such inactivation is possible. So when 
the inactive uh, individual enzyme become inactive during the direct immobilization or the isolation and purification of enzyme is not is not cost effective because we always find that enzyme proteins are costly that all enzyme all proteins are not enzyme the proteins with the active site they are enzyme so enzymes are more costlier so if you if you consider any kind of pure enzyme obviously it will very costly but when you consider any kind of cell we will find that it is less costly and the greatest advantage of the whole cell immobilization is the enzymes inside the whole cell will be active and stable for longer period of time that is what what is not possible in case of uh, this uh, enzymes do you know that you can keep the organism active for longer period of time so this is the advantage that we have in this particular process now what are the other advantages of this of the whole cell immobilization if you look into the multiple enzymes can be introduced in a single step so you know that i told you inside the cell we have metabolic pathway in the metabolic pathways that a number of steps are involved so a to b b to c c to c um, so you know that like this a to b b to c c to d like this this is a number of process we there and every step you 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 have enzymes you know you required enzymes so what we considered this is a multi enzyme system so multi enzyme system we can introduce as a single step that is the major advantage of this uh, of this particular whole cell immobilization system and if you look at this uh, extraction and purification of the cells are not required because you can use the cell directly you don't have to purify it only the organism that you are uh, you are supposed to use that you have to immobilize on the system cells are stable for longer period of time this is the one of the advantage i i mentioned before and it is a cost effective method i can i can give a typical example that bacillus coagulin bacillus the this bacillus coagulin is it has the glucose isomerase enzyme glucose isomerase so if you if you if suppose we have a column in this column we we if you immobilize this bacillus coagulin and pass the glucose this one end and other end we can we can we can produce the fructose so so obviously it is it is a cost effective method we don't have to purify the enzymes the immobilized whole cell reactor can be operated at a dilution rate that is higher than the maximum specific growth rate of the organism i told you since you are holding the cells you are not allowing the cell to go out of the system so the dilution rate has little role to play because the dilution if in if in you cross this d washout uh, that uh, in the normal chemostat process that that problem can be overcome here so this is the major advantage of this whole cell immobilization process now purpose of whole cell immobilization is increase the volumetric productivity this is one then increase the product concentration in the outlet stream and decrease the substrate concentration in outlet stream this is very important so increase the volumetric productivity what do you mean by volumetric productivity volumetric productivity is the amount of product form per unit volume now if we have more volumetric productivity our recovery cost will be very less which is more desirable and uh, product concentration that you know that also very important that uh, if uh, that also if a uh, product concentration is high then also cost to, of recovery will be very high then uh, with the, so first is the volume so if we assume suppose 5 kg per cubic meter of product and if you if you increase the volume 100 cubic meter so how much volume of product amount of product you can have 5 into 100 that is 50 kg am i right now uh, 500 kg now if he has 200 then this will be 5 into 200 will be 1000 kg so as we increase the volume of the uh, of the liquid that your productivity increases and decrease substrate concentration in the upstream that out, uh, the outlet stream is very important 
if the concentration in the outlet stream is less that means what you have at your load for the waste of the water treatment process will be very less which is uh, that uh, that would be, that will be uh, that will help to reduce the product cost to a great extent Now, question comes what are the methods of uh, wholesale immobilization? The, we have adsorption, then covalent bonding, then cell to cell cross linking, encapsulation, and entrapment. Now, what do you mean by uh, adsorption? We told you the adsorption is a physical phenomenon. Physical phenomenon means this cell is simply adhered on the surface of the solid matrix. So, uh, so the bonding between the cell and the solid matrix is due to the van der Waals type of holes. So, if you if you if you pass your liquid at the very high flow rate, then there will be at their axial shear force. Due to presence of the axial shear force, there is every possibility cell may dislodge from the surface of the uh, of the solid matrix. So, that is the uh, major disadvantage of the adsorption process. But this is considered as the cheapest process because you just pack the material on the solid matrix and pass the cell through the solid matrix so that it can absorb. But when you consider the covalent binding, it is it is appear to be the uh, very strong binding. This is like this. So, I told you covalent binding is the, the kind of electron sharing where the electron we share that bond is very strong. Cell to cell cross linking that means I told you this cell with the help of uh, cross linking is the, like glutaraldehyde we can we can have the cross linking and inside maybe you have solid matrix we may be uh, that embedded on the surface of the solid matrix this bonding also covalent bonding this also very strong bonding the encapsulation means i told you that day to day life we take lot of capsule and in the capsule you know that we have we put the medicine and it is enclosed inside the capsule like you know we we know the envelope inside the envelope we put the letter similarly inside the that you know that coating we put the uh, uh, the whole cell and entrapment entrapment means i told you the fiber entrapment gel entrapment we have gel that inside the gel the organism might be entrapped now inside the fiber the um, this organism might be entrapped. So, these are the different immobilization techniques that we have. Now, le let us uh, give you some, uh, some application of this. Now, when you talk about the adsorption process, uh, supporting solid matrix is gelatin, porous glass, the cotton fiber, and DE cellulose. So, these are the different solid matrix we can use. And uh, the cells, so the one is lactobacillus, wh which convert the lactose to lactic acid. I, I told you that you know that lactic acid is uh, very good uh, uh, the uh, raw material that uh, chemicals for the preservation of different food products. I have given the example of the cheese uh, is, a, is a is a food product and which can preserve the milk protein and fat for longer period of time due to the presence of this lactic acid. Now, in case of porous glass, if we use the saccharomyces cerevisia, then it converts the glucose to alcohol. Gymoborous mobilis also can convert glucose to ethanol. And nocodia, it can undergo some kind of steroid transformation process. Now, covalent binding, we have cellulose, uh, cyanuric, uh, this chloride, we have saccharomyces cerevisiae, glucose to ethanol can be used. The cross linking, we have we used the cross glutaraldehyde is used as a cross linking agent, and E. coli, when you immobilize, then it produces the fumaric acid. Now, <clears throat> then entrapment, we have uh, aluminum alginate, calcium alginate, we have candida tropicalis, we have saccharomyces cerevisiae. The one is candida tropical is used for phenol degradation and saccharomyces cerevisiae convert glucose to ethanol. Then encapsulation we have polyester, alginate, poly uh, lysine, this uh, hydro hybridomer cell and streptomyces species. One is used for glucose to fructose, another used for monocular antibody production. Now, there are other some examples that I have given here that is the amino acid synthesis, fumaric acid, 
when immobilized on E. coli at 37 degree centigrade, it converted to a L aspartic acid. 95 percent conversion of fumaric acid was observed at a flow rate of 0.8 milliliter per milliliter of bed volume per hour. Cell is usually entrapped in the polyacrylamide gel. Now, another, another industrial application is that raffinose that is carbohydrate transformation that uh, when raffinose it is uh, raffinose is in presence of uh, motorella that is species venacea this converted to raffinose to sucrose and galactose. Now, organic acid ethanol in presence of bacterium species that is converted to acetic acid ethanol is converted to acetic acid. Now, another very inter interesting uh, application that we have uh, that is the uh, uh, waste water treatment process particularly uh, I personally involve that uh, in IIT Delhi that you know conversion of distillery effluent to methane and carbon dioxide. So, what we have done we have it is a basically two stage process one is acidogens and other is methanogens. We immobilize the cell in the polypropylene chloride that solid matrix and I shall show you how is the solid matrix. Then I shall also show you after the immobilization that how the solid matrix look. So, you know that we just pick the solid matrix and pour pass the uh, that distillery effluent and we continuously produce high uh, methane and carbon dioxide. And this process we can operate continuously for 4 months. After that the performance of the reactor decreases. So, we, 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 can, we, can, we can stop the reactor and regenerate the system again. So, this is like this the distillery effluent initially if you look at the BOD is very high. Initially BOD was 40,000 and this is converted to volatile fatty acid like acetic acid, propionic acid, butyric acid and this acid converted to methane and carbon dioxide. And so, 40,000 BOD 5 that will be converted the 4000 with the, the 90 percent removal of the beauty that has been taking place. Now, if you if you see the see the experimental setup, it is like this. This is what this is I call this is the acidogenic reactor and this is the methanogenic reactor. So, this is acetogenic and this is methanogenic. So, what is happening that here with the help of pump that you know this is the this we put the uh, we take the uh, distillery effluent here and we, we, we pass the uh, we, uh, this is the solid matrix inside we trickle down and in process is converted to organic acid. Then with the help of pump we one pump is there we pump this uh, here and we when we pass here then this acid will convert it to methane and carbon dioxide and this is the gas collector where we, we collect the gas. Now, as I told you that if you look at the solid matrix, the polypropylene chloride looks like this. We cut it in the, this is 1 inch diameter. We cut it 1 inch by 1 inch that we cut it into different size, this size. Then, then we pack it in the solid matrix. So, it is it looks like this that in the in the in the in the solid matrix we, we pack this material and then we prepared the cell suspension acidogenic culture or methanogenic culture we pass it like this and and you know continuously we do until unless we find the cell concentration here constant cell concentration is constant. Then we <coughs> we uh, we we, we hold it for some time that uh, uh, with, the, with the media and then uh, let the reaction take place when uh, your gas production is maximum then is replaced by the distillery effluent. So, we continuously pass and produce the, uh, produce the acid and this acid we similarly use for the second reactor 
for converting acid to methane. Now, this is before immobilization the solid matrix looks like this. After the immobilization you can see this is how the how the cell that you know that is uh, that you know attached with the surface of the solid matrix. Now, when you take out the <coughs> this uh, this cell out it is becoming black. This back to the color might be due to the H2S that you know formed during the anaerobic digestion process. This reacts with the uh, polypropylene and it changes the color of the solid matrix. So, another very interesting thing I want to share with you that is the rotating disc uh, biological contactor. Rotating this biological contactor is a simple rotating disc with a with a fixed film and biological reactor which uh, makes use of the microbial cell attached to a, a specific surface and microorganism growing attached to the rotating disc transform the soluble organic matter into energy and new cell this is used for the treatment of organic wastewater now let me let me explain that because you know that suppose i i, I have i have some uh, picture because before I show you the picture, let me give you a simple diagram. Suppose this is a rotating shaft. This is the rotating shaft. Now here we can have the bearing. So we can have the bearing and here we can have a motor. So here the discs are embedded on the surface of the solid matrix. Discs are embedded and here the, you, you put the liquid uh, wastewater in and this is wastewater out. This is in and this is out. So, it is rotating at a very low rpm. When it rotates the disc that you know this is circular disc when immersed in the water. So, it will touch the surface of the liquid. So, it has the weighted surface. In the weighted surface the cell will be immobilized on the surface and the organic material that present in the liquid that will uh, that will be utilized by the cell and, and produce the cell mass and other compound when carbon dioxide and other compounds. So, some kind of degradation of the of the of the of the organic matter will take place. Now, if you if you look if you if you see the picture how it occurs, it is like this. So, <clears throat> so you know that it is with the help of peristaltic pump you can you can put the liquid like this and this is the disc and this is rotating with the uh, motor you know this uh, disc and uh, here it is rotated like this. So, you know the cells are that grow on the surface of the solid matrix this is the disc and this is how cells are growing on the solid matrix. So, in the outside layer they will come contact with the liquid and there we call the aerobic layer and inside we call the anaerobic layer. So, uh, so uh, the inside organisms uh, can carry out some kind of anaerobic reaction and outside we carried out some kind of aerobic reaction. So, uh, this is we call it bio coating and then then we take the liquid out in this way we take in and and we are taking the effluent out in this way. So, in that way we, we reduce the organic content of the you know, waste water to a great extent. Now, if you look at uh, this process can be represented in in other very simple way this is the disc how they mounted uh, on a particular shaft and immerse on a trough and this is the uh, this is the primary settling uh, uh, that uh, uh, tank and after from this primary settling tank the supernatant you pass it through this uh, this uh, rotating with this biological contactor and uh, the reaction take place and and the s0 will be compared to s and this is the secondary settling tank. Then this is the treated waste water that we have. Now this we here we can do the substrate balance under steady state condition. What is the rate of input? That is f into s zero. Am I right? And what is the what is generation? Generation will be zero. And what is the output? F into s. And what is the reaction that we have? minus Rs that is the rate of substrate utilization per unit surface area it depends on the because cells we assume it presence in the in the in the disc not in the suspension. So, it depends on the area. So, the AS is the area of the weighted surface. So, your Rs can be represented like this where AS is considered as the weighted surface area. Now, considering the uh, monoid equation 
or Michaelis Menten equation we can write in the similar way that uh, uh, that monot equation minus R s equal to q q max into x into s k s plus s where q max is the maximum specific substrate removal rate. So, uh, so, so this is multiply by x then it will be ma maximum substrate removal rate and into s k s plus s this how we can write this equation. Now, we can write that equa BPS equation that, that this equation now we can write in this form that uh, f by a. Now, here uh, we have we have f and uh, we have here you have f and a. Now, we can we can this is equal to this am I right this is equal to this we can write there. Now, we and then we, we can write this equation f by a s equal to q max into x into s k s plus s s and s 0 a is the volumetric flow rate. So, so then we can we can write the the equation in this form that is a s equal to like this and uh, this and uh, total surface area this is the n number of discs there. So, we can write this a uh, generalized equation f into k s s plus s i uh, s i minus 1 minus s i. Uh, Q max by S i. So, this word i stands for 1, 2, 3, 4, 2 n. This is how we can find out total weighted area because this weighted area are responsible for carrying out the reaction. Now, another industrial application is that uh, that is a kind of beer industry that we have. Now, in the beer industry what we have we have uh, this is the wort. Now, what is the wort? Wort is the fermentation media, and uh, this is when uh, this is Saccharomyces calvergensis. Uh, we uh, this is used for the mostly for lager beer formation, and this uh, is when it immobilizes on Kaisel good or PVC fragments, and then it uh, continuously pass through this column, and we, we can we can we can we can produce the beer. This is we can part the wort and here we will get the beer that is that is what is and then and then again we are passing is a uh, saccharomyces calvergis is another column to get the mature beer whatever unconverted substrate is there glucose is there that will be further converted to alcohol. So, the support material was packed with uh, with a column 2 meter long and 0.2 meter in diameter. The wort passed through a column at a rate of 3 liter per hour. The column operated 3 month with outlet uh, without contamination. So, this is one of the application that we have uh, of this whole, whole wholesale immobilized system. Now, activity of the wholesale immobilization system can be expressed as the relative activity, the comparing the activity of the immobilized cell with the same number of free cells. Suppose, uh, mm, you we have in the in the suspension we have cells and in the immobilized system we have immobilized cells. Now, if your number of cells is same and we if we compare that what is the performance of this uh, suspended cell with respect to immobilized cells that we call relative activity. Absolute specific activity is the reaction based on the unit weight or unit volume of the whole catalyst that means per unit cell mass uh, where the immobilized cell mass that uh, what is the activity what is the rate of substrate removal that uh, that is actually that call absolute specific activity of the cell. We, I, in this connection I want to tell you that in case of immobilized enzyme with specific activity I we, we express as uh, the micromoles of substrate converted per minute per gram of solid matrix though this is something similar to that. Now, activity of immobilized uh, immobilized whole cell the adsorption and entrapment methods gives R1 value close to 100 percent because we assume since the since, since the cells are loosely connected on the surface and your diffusion problem is very less we can expect at the 100 percent of uh, reaction while the R2 in case of the former where uh, where cell are loading inside the cell then we have uh, we have some problem because we have uh, the rate of reaction will be little bit less as compared to the, the adsorption technique or you know in the suspended cells. 
Now, so in case of spore immobilization, let me tell you in case of filamentous organism uh, that uh, we have seen that uh, it is difficult that uh, whether breakage due to the breakage of this uh, breakage of uh, this hypha and fragmentation of mycelia again cause the reducing the activity. But commercial plant exploited the spore immobilization technique are in operation uh, for the sterilized transformation as fusarium, uh, the fusarium is the use and uh, this is largely used uh, uh, use for the steroid transformation process. So, this is another uh, problem that we have in case of fungal cell. Now, factors that affect the, uh, the immobilization technique, there are several. One is cell, uh, cell matrix interaction, mass transfer and light. These are the different factors that influence this process. Now, if you look at cell matrix interaction, uh, when using the reticulous uh, polyurethane foam, this polyurethane foam, we know this is largely used for uh, insulation purpose in order to immobilize any cell uh, to function well. The volumetric fraction of the foam has to be sufficient enough so that all the cells and the reticular spores of the foam is large enough to contain the cells. So, I told you during the immobilization enzyme that you know when you have pores uh, of the solid matrix, the size of the spore, it should be double the size of the enzyme. Otherwise, the, the enzyme cannot inside, enter into the inside the pore. Now, if the pore size is more, then there is every possibility of leaking of the pore. So, pore size plays very important role as per, as per the immobilization of the whole cell. Now, mass transfer as you know that mass transfer I told you previously also that as soon as you immobilize the cell, the mass transfer limitation problem that we take place, the, that uh, the substrate has diffused since it is uh, co containing two phases liquid and solid, the uh, substrate to diffuse from the uh, liquid surface to solid surface and then when the product formation takes the product has to diffuse from the surface to the. So, that kind of problem that we have that has been I am not going, going in details you can just uh, go through that and uh, the mass transfer uh, resistance that has been uh, decreases the nutrient transport that if your mass transfer resistance is more the nutrient transfer will be reduced the your growth of the organism that will be reduced to a great extent. Now, light also plays very a uh, typical role in case of immobilized host system, particularly photosynthetic organisms, they require light. So, it, it gives some kind of barrier to the light penetration. So, we shall have to put the LED light in the inside the inside the reactor so that light transfer light uh, trans uh, that transmission may be proper. In that way, we can <coughs> we can uh, we can reduce the uh, the the uh, the light penetration problem to some extent. So, uh, what I uh, what I wanted to tell in this particular lecture that uh, that how the immobilized whole cell system can be used for in the biochemical industries. It can be used for the uh, production of certain product. It can it can use for carrying out the series of reaction in a particular one cell. It can, it can use for carrying out a single stage reaction in the uh, by using a particular. Uh, organism. I, I have given the example of bacillus coagulant, how it is converted glucose to fructose. I also told you the how in the uh, bio, biomethanation process, how distillery effluent can be converted to methane and carbon dioxide. This, this is a multi-step process, both acidogens and methanogens, they, how they involve and we can get the methane and carbon dioxide. Then I have given you the example of beer formation process. Then what are the different physical uh, parameters, so the, what are the different parameters that influence the uh, immobilized whole cell system that also uh, we discussed and the activity of the whole activity of the whole cell, how is the effect by this mass transfer light penetration uh, that I discussed. Thank you very much.